Okay, so welcome to part five of Learn Go. In this video, we are going to be going over looping constructs in Go. So the only keyword that exists for looping in Go is the keyword for. So unlike other languages like Python or C, C++, Java that have other constructs such as keywords that involve while or do while, the only keyword that exists in Go that we can use for looping is for. So that's very minimalistic and it can be kind of a benefit uh, depending on which way you know, you look at it. So we're going to be going over how one can make use of these looping constructs in Go. And before we do that, we're going to just go ahead and do what we've done in the previous videos. And that is just start off by package main, import the format for outputting stuff to the screen, and then go ahead and get our main function going there. So what we're going to do is we're going to start typing in here. We're going to go through a number of different ways in which we can loop through some things. So the first way is just going to be the simplest way and then we'll kind of build up from there. So what we'll first do is we'll just define a variable i. So we'll initially set this variable i is equal to zero. And then what we'll do is we'll go down here to the next line and we'll say four. Again, that's a keyword so you know that it's highlighted in this other color here to denote that it's a go keyword. And then what we're going to say is four i less than or equal to some number that we want to loop up to. In this case, I'm just going to pick 10. And then we're going to open close curly braces and everything within those curly braces are going to be the content of the loop. So what we'll do in this loop, we'll just do something simple. We'll print out the variable, the iterator i. So we'll print that out after every iteration of the loop. And then we'll increment i by one. So we'll say i is equal, i is equal to i plus one. So we'll do that. So I will increment on every iteration of this loop. Let's go ahead and save that. We'll clear the screen and we'll give this a run. So go run loop.go. And what we see here is starting at zero, ending at 10, we've got all the numbers printed out there. So it's inclusive. So it starts off at zero, it includes zero, and then it goes all the way up to less than or equal to equal to 10. So another way we can define a for loop is maybe a little bit more familiar with what you've seen, kind of this, this triple. So we'll say four, and then we'll define our variable, our looping variable. So let's say j colon equals zero. We'll start off there as zero again. Then we'll say, we'll separate this by semicolons. We'll say j is less than or equal to some value. Let's just bring it down to five in this case. And then we'll increment j within the loop. So this is probably more similar to what you've seen or what you generally do in a language like C, C++, Java, Python, more maybe similar to C and C++ and Java, where you have the variable that you're is your iterator, what you want to loop up to, and then your increment count. So we're we're starting off at zero, we're going up to five, and then we're incrementing by one each time in the loop. So again, what we do is we open the curly brace, we close the curly brace, and then in this case, we'll just say format, print line, and then we'll just print out J to the screen. So just so we know that loop is actually going. So we have the first 10 from the initial for loop, and then we have the next zero to five in the second for loop. So we'll just keep going right along here. So in another for loop, what we can do is we can uh, have something that essentially only prints out if it meets a certain condition. So same sort of construct that we had before. So we'll do another looping variable for k equal to zero. Let's say in this case, k is less than or equal to 10 again. And then we'll say k plus plus. So let's say in this loop, I just want to only print out something if it is if it's odd. So if the if the if the iterator value if the iterator value is even, I want to skip over it. And otherwise if the iterator value is odd, I want to go ahead and print it out. So what I can do is I can say if we'll get to if statements, if else statements in a, in a further video, but uh, I'm just going to pepper this in here for now because I'm sure that you are familiar with if else statements on some level. So I'm going to say if k mod 2 is equal to zero, then we're just going to continue. So we're just going to continue on through the loop. We're going to skip that iteration onto the next one. Otherwise, if that doesn't hit, if that if statement isn't triggered, then we're just going to go ahead and, and say format.print line, and we're going to print out K. So if this if statement is triggered, that means that the iterator is even. So we're going to continue, which means we'll go back up to the loop. We'll hit one. That's not even, so then we print it out. So we're going to essentially print out for every odd value of the loop. Let's just verify that that's actually what happens. So we'll see the first loop, the second loop, and then indeed we have one, three, five, seven, nine, the odd numbers from zero through 10 right there.
So one other looping construct that I do want to mention is that you could have kind of a for uh, like a while true loop like in Python or something like that. You might see something that looks like this where it's like while one and then you have your content of the loop there or maybe something like while true in, in another language like Java or C++. So that construct can also be replicated here and essentially you'll just say for without any parameters there and then the content of the loop will just keep, keep uh, running. So in this case we can say you know, format dot print line, um, keep keep printing. So if we go ahead and run this, we'll just go. We'll see a bunch of keep printing. So we'll go ahead and run this file, and then just keep printing is just well, it's keep printing. I guess it, it's it's continuing to print rather. Bad grammar. Anyway, so if we want to break out of that, we need something like break here. So the break statement would break us out of that initial. Um, so it would print out once, it would reach this break statement, it would break out of this loop, and that would be that. So we would only, in this case, get a single output of key printing. So that's pretty much it for this video. That's the looping construct. We'll return to this in greater detail in another video. But for now, this gives you a flavor of how to use the for loop in Go. So thanks again for watching. As always, the code will be available on my GitHub. The link will be in the description below. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to leave them below as well. And have a great day.